Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Grant and in today's video we're going to talk about my little workhorse camera in the studio. In this very YouTube studio, the camera that really does a lot of the uh, sort of heavy lifting, B-roll, content creation, things like that, right? And it's my little tiny uh, Panasonic Lumix G85 camera, right? So I got this camera late last year and we'll go into the reasons why I got it and you know a whole heap of other stuff but you know it has become I would say an essential part of my YouTube um, studio content creation all around this sort of you know brand I'm building online and stuff like that right so um, let's roll that intro and let's get straight into it Hey everyone, welcome back. So yeah, um, you know, the Panasonic G85. Um, when I got this camera, I currently had um, the Lumix G9 and the Lumix GH5 Mark II. The GH5 Mark II is my main YouTube camera. It films all these videos and stuff like that, except uh, when I'm talking about it, I usually use the G9. However, you know, um, most of the time, I'm either talking about one camera or the other, the GH5 Mark II, or the G9 a lot of the times, right? And one of the reasons I um, got the G85 was to complement those two cameras. So, you know, I could create more B-roll, use it, you know, to quickly, um, you know, make thumbnails and, you know, quick little reels and uh, video snippets and stuff like that. It was really a third camera to complement this sort of YouTube studio. And um, it really has come in handy, right? Um, also, I also got it as a B cam. So, you know, I didn't want to keep stripping down, you know, my GH5 Mark II for when I had client work um, as my B cam with, along with my G9. So I needed another camera in the camera bag as a B cam, as a backup camera, without having to pull down the YouTube studio the whole time, right? And that's where the G85 come into it. And I must say, I've used it a lot on gigs. Um, you know, just last week, I used this as the main camera, right? Um, and it worked absolutely fantastic. I just needed something a little bit more nimble, uh, quick fire content creation for a restaurant. So um, yeah. It has come in super handy and it really has become an essential part of my YouTube setup, professional work, and even like, you know, I haven't done a whole heap of street photography with this camera yet, but I plan to, right? My GX9 is really, you know, my street photography camera, right? But, you know, we're just gonna go over, you know, a whole heap of reasons why this is such a, you know, great option for anyone that wants to get into content creation in general, not just YouTube, but you know, Instagram Reels, TikTok Reels, Instagram Photos, uh, general, you know, social media content creation. This camera is absolutely perfect for that. Um, and you know, it's also good for, you know, the hobbyist photographers, hobbyist videographers that want a small, light, nimble camera. It's fantastic for that sort of stuff too. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's let the chat begin. Okay, so you know the reasons why I got this camera, um, you know, the main reason was it was it's a, a camera that complements my current Lumix setup. Micro Four Thirds mount, I've got Micro Four Thirds lenses. It made sense to get another little Micro Four Thirds camera, and this one was on special for um, just over a thousand dollars. I bought it in the kit form. Okay, here it is. Here the box that I got from Camera House Australia. Um, it was going at a great price. I also got the 25 mm f 1.7, and that's a lens I'm starting to use a lot. It's really made me. Uh, think about 50 mil again, um, but yeah, so yeah, I got it with that. It come with the 12 to 60 uh, variable aperture lens. I also wanted to get this combo because I wanted um, this lens to pair up on my GH5 Mark II as a permanent sort of camera setup all the time so I could take my um, f2.8 to f4 20, uh, 12 to 60 mil out on gigs with me. I'm currently filming with that lens and that camera setup right now. This lens is a bit slower, but I tell you what, sometimes, and I've been getting some compliments, you know, when I do use this lens, it's almost got like, you know, a mist sort of feel to it. When you use this lens on the GH5 Mark II in particular, it's got a misty sort of filmish sort of feel to it. And I really, really like the look that this lens uh, provides. Also, this lens is great for general content creation. Um, you know, I'm using this a lot to do like product photography for the channel. Um, also, you know, close-up shots, macro shots, and you know, it's got a really good minimal focusing distance. And the lens is just, yeah, it's a great value lens. It's very, very underrated, I feel, in the Panasonic Lumix 
lineup of lenses. I highly recommend it. And paired up with this um, G8, uh, sorry, uh, Panasonic G85, it's just a great combo. Absolutely love it, right? Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, this camera is a super lightweight setup, okay? I'm finding a lot of the time, if you've seen any top-down videos, um, it's been with this camera. This camera just clicks into place onto a tripod and you can take it around anywhere. You can manipulate these arms and get like the whole bend thing happening and stuff like that. It's absolutely fantastic for top down shots because it's so lightweight and it doesn't, uh, you know, unbalance your tripod or your C stand and stuff, whatever you've got it on. I've got it, I use this here, but I also use like a C sand as well. Mount this on there and, you know, a couple of sandbags on the C stand and this is not going anywhere because it's so light, okay? So it's a great um, you know, lightweight package for content creation. The other thing is, is that, you know, <clears throat> it is a 16 megapixel camera, um, you know, so it's a few less megapixels than the GH5 um, Mark II and the G9 that I'm used to, even the GX9 is 20 megapixels. But the 16 megapixels, man, I don't know. There's something about 16 megapixels. I just love the look of the uh, images it provides, the way it renders down or compresses, let me know how it works down in the comments below because I'm not too sure. I'm not a techie kind of guy. Um, but something about the 16 megapixels I've loved. And that was another reason I ended up getting the G85 because I went back and had a look you know, at my first Panasonic camera, the files I used to get out of that, the Lumix G7. And that was an, um, non-stabilized camera the g85 is stabilized too that's another great thing but the 16 megapixel sensor on the g7 going through the shots i just loved the way they looked and i don't know it might be just a pure brain thing or mental thing i you know see but there's something a way it renders down colors and looks the images the photos look great Shooting uh, video is also, you know, so easy on this thing. You know, I'm always shooting full manual, both photos and video, um, so easy to shoot. And, you know, the natural profile on the Panasonic G85 always looks great. There's just a couple of settings that I tweak um, for my video settings on this, and I get great results with this little camera combo as well, right? So that's a few points um, that I'd, you know, like to make, you know, that this camera is really, really good. And every time I make a video around the G85, I get a lot of feedback. So it must be still a very popular little camera. And it is such a, you know, budget friendly. Second hand, you're picking these things up for $400, $500 in Australia with this lens. But even you now, I'm seeing them down with the 12 to 60 kit, they're under $1,000 now, right? So they're trying to, Panasonic's trying to get rid of them. And you know, it's just an absolutely brilliant little camera to get, um, you know, if you are a budding YouTuber, content creator, hobbyist, or whatever you are, this is a great camera to pick up, um, especially content creation and YouTubers. I feel as though, you know, if you want a budget-friendly camera that can pretty much do it all, this is the camera for you, right? So, um, you know, in conclusion to this, I know I sort of rambled on a bit here about this one, but um, I do get asked a lot about the G85, and you know, do I recommend it? And the answer is 100% yes, I do recommend this camera purely for the fact of, you know, cash to quality value ratio, okay? You know, you're picking this, as I said, you know, the price value for this thing is fantastic. The features that are packed into this, the image quality, the video quality, the handling, the lightweightness of the camera fits in a side camera bag. You can take it absolutely anywhere with you. It 100% yes, this is a great value camera. Um, you know, it is a micro four thirds sensor, so it's a smaller sensor, but you know, still great results all the, all the time. The price just can't be beat, the results can't be beat. And yeah, I just think it's a great buy. And I didn't think it was gonna be such an essential camera here in my YouTube setup, but it really is because, you know, I've got a camera on, you know, the tripod all times. My G9 is either in my camera bag um, away because you know I've done it on a shoot and stuff like that. Having this camera just on the shelf at all times, ready to go to make content creation, all my reels, all my shorts on YouTube that I've been doing are created pretty much with this camera handheld. Fantastic stuff, right? So yeah, let me know what you think. Are you still using a uh, Panasonic G85? I think it's a brilliant camera. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, 
big thumbs up for the video if you like it and get value out of it and please sit um, consider subscribing to the channel that helps me out so much um, i love this community that we're developing here it's absolutely fantastic so uh yeah until next time i'll see you all later bye